Hello everyone, so today we are going to try out two AI video models that are based on WAN 2.1 as fine-tuned models. The first one I want to talk about is the COSVID. The COSVID has a very interesting fine-tuned mechanism. Now, this is a fast auto-regressive video diffusion model as explained in their theory and research paper. As you can see, the COSVID model's obvious unique point is fast generation within short time frames, and you can already start creating video. Now, as you can see on the Hugging Face page, they're using the WAN 2.1 text to video 14B model as the foundation. So therefore, the video quality, the text encoder, everything is able to reuse the WAN 2.1 model. And right here, as we see in the abstract of this research paper, they're obviously selling the unique point of these models, generating frame-by-frame -frame latency way faster than normal AI video models, thanks to the auto-regressive method. It's basically like a student learning from a teacher. The teacher tells the student what the initial frames of the video are going to be, and then it guides the student AI model to generate each frame step by step, creating that elephant in the diagram and the motion of the elephant walking. As you can see in the web UI they have, it's all text to video. It doesn't need many add-on features to create video, it's just based on the fine-tuned model for five-second short video generations. That's what they're highlighting. This model is able to generate video with almost the same quality as the base model. Well, I can't say this one is going to be better quality than other commercial licensed or commercial AI video models. But the COSVID does have different video generation types as well. Other than the five second video, which use three steps, long video generation is also possible using three steps, with the auto-regressive method and the bi-directional method, which also uses three-step, five-second video generation. So, with just the AI models they provide, you can use three sampling steps to generate video. But then, you know, as we've played around with other low-sampling step AI models, usually like three steps in real situations or on consumer PCs, we won't be able to get a clear picture of each image frame that way. The next one is MovieGen. This is another fine-tuned model based on WAN 2.1. As you can see, here's what they've listed about this AI model and what they've fine-tuned. This model focuses on cinematic aesthetic styles for AI video clips, where higher clarity and realism are improved for the quality and visual coherence of the video clips. Also, MovieGen 1.1, as they've said, outputs 720p resolution and HD 1080p resolution from this AI model right now. So, MovieGen is pretty promising. For people who want high-quality video generation clips, you can spend more time on one video generation without having to regenerate repeatedly with the same prompts, hoping for something good to come out with different seed numbers. With MovieGen, that doesn't need to happen. It focuses on one video generation quality and makes it work like your movie scenes. For example, here we see a lot of character-focused scenes. As you can see, this AI model is able to generate high-definition resolutions. Therefore, as you can see in the output video, there's a very clear picture of the man holding the unicorn hat. And I see that this AI model isn't only for human characters, but also works well for animals. For instance, here are three cats on a sushi bar. And right here we've got another style, a landscape style of video scene. This kind of futuristic, apocalyptic style of scene shows waves crashing into an island and there are full volcano eruptions in the video clip. The camera angles are very dynamic and you can see that it's able to produce these kinds of scenes within this AI model. Well, of course, this is a 14B parameter size AI model from WAN 2.1 and it has more enhancement for the aesthetics and coherence of every object in the video. So therefore, we're going to try that out in Comfy UI and see how that looks for both models one for fast speed generation and the other for high quality, taking your time, you know, spending more time to make one good quality video. Either way, it's one approach for people who want to create AI video. Let me know what you think, which one would you prefer for your video creations? So let's go check it out. In the Comfy UI interface, first, I'll be using this workflow, a very simple basic text to video workflow for WAN 2.1. And here, the only thing we need is setting the right latent video for the empty latent settings here. For cause vid, I just tried that out with a longer video length and it worked. 
I even tried a 256 video length previously, and it was able to run locally on my NVIDIA 4090, so I think that's, well, a lot of people have this model of GPU so it can run longer video lengths. And in this example, as you can see here, I got a 21 second video of two people talking at a table like this. Although I've tried a few times, it doesn't have much movement. If you turn the video length longer, something happens like the frame pack issue. And I see that the three step long video generation, the auto aggressive method they use, is similar to frame pack. But the thing is, this AI model tends to look pretty steady in those video motions. I've tried one example here in Comfy UI, just a dynamic motion of a paper plane morphing into a swam. So the swamp here, as you can see, morphs and then it goes from the form of paper to a swam. That runs in a 10 second video length and it generated with no problems locally on my PC using Comfy UI. So how much time did it take to generate this paper transforming into a swarm? Let's check this command prompt window. We have 20 step settings for the sampling and I used 1 minute 55 seconds, so about 2 minutes, to generate a 10 second paper to swarm transformation video here. Well, again, I think the quality isn't quite excellent because I'm using the 1.3B model for text to video and also the LoRa model of this model. One thing worth mentioning is that this model can be used as a LoRa model and you can use that as a diffusion model in the diffusion loader in Comfy UI. So right here, in my examples, I'm using a LoRa model loader and loading this cause vid by direct text to video with the 1.3 billion parameter size model. This is the low RA model coming from here. And again, I'll provide the link in the video description below. You guys can check this out. As you can see in the hugging face link here, this is the 1.3 billion LoRa model. Again, this is not 13 billion. And right here, this is the larger parameter size of the LoRa model which is the 14 billion text-to-video LoRa model. This one is going to work with the 14B text-to-video WAN 2.1 model. So don't mix it up. If you use 1.3B, then use the 1.3B LoRa. If you use the 14B1 2.1, you've got to use that LoRa model of the 14B COSVID LoRa model. Also, there's another dedicated diffusion model for COSVID, which is here. We've got the COSVID FP8 save tensor files. This is the dedicated AI model running for COSVID. So you can load this into the diffusion model and bypass the LoRa model in the workflow, or you can use the loaded LoRa model for your character LoRa or any restyle LoRa models, and then use the diffusion model to load this COSVID FP8 save tensor file. So let's try this out with a few examples. I'm going to use the 1.3B model and see how this minimalistic small size model performs in Comfy UI. I guess a lot of lower end GPU hardware consumer PCs are going to be able to run the 1.3B AI model as well. So I've just tried this text prompt that's coming from the demo page where we have spooky haunting mansions for Halloween style scenes. And we've generated it already here, as you can see. Well, some of the spooky pumpkin heads look a little weird in terms of movement there. But so far, the haunting house mansion here is pretty coherent. We don't see any broken parts throughout this 5 second video and that's pretty nice. We're able to use the LoRa model and connect that to just a normal text to video workflow. Using that, we're able to generate this video in a very short time. In this example, I just generated it in 2 minutes and the previous one was shorter. 81 frames in one minute just by using this text to video workflow and connecting it with the COSVID LoRa. I've got another example where I generated an even longer video length, which is a 12 second video of an FPV drone view going through a tunnel or this train tunnel here. I just generated a 12 second video using this LoRa model. But then I see this LoRa model doesn't provide much movement when you generate long video lengths. If it's something over five seconds, it will pretty much stay still. Like this, you know, two person talking scene sitting at the table for 21 seconds. The other one, an FPV drone view for 12 seconds. You see, so far the whole video clip here feels like it's looping the same video. So far what I've tested for long video, it happens like that with this video model. For five seconds, you'll start seeing some movement as well. Let's try one more time with another one that I want to do. This is going to be a more abstract style of magical garden plan with different colors. Let's see how that looks like.
Here's another example of the garden text prompt. Well, since we're using just a 1.3 billion parameter size model, it doesn't give me too much magical gardening style like what they showed in the demo, but still it's able to follow the prompts, showing the garden and some magical energy on the hand. Well, these are still able to follow the prompt, and let's check out how fast it can run. So, as you can see right here, we have the generation time through the batch, and then we start the inference of 30 steps. Actually, this time, I set it a little higher, using 30 steps with zero seed number. Starting that, the first time I tried, it took 3 minutes and 15 seconds. Then, I started another one with 30 steps, it took 3 minutes and 14 seconds. But before that, when I tried with 20 sampling steps, well, it was kind of you know, a lot of pixelated feel when it comes to this kind of model. So I tried it with 30 steps afterward. And so far, this kind of auto-regressive sampling model is mostly able to generate fast video. But then you've got to try with the 14B model if you want higher quality. You've got to make it clear this is the difference. So once you have 14 billion, I believe it's not going to be a problem to get better quality results. The second model I'll be trying out is MovieGen, and this one works pretty well. Actually, I've tried out some previous video, and I did one video that went really wild. I tried it with 720p resolution. Check this out. We've got the info here where I generated a 3 second 720p resolution video with this one, and the quality is pretty nice. One thing worth mentioning is that this fine-tuned model they've put out supports both 720p resolution and 1080p resolution for the output quality. And I tried that one with 720p only on my local machine. So the first thing we're going to try is the same workflow here. We're going to use the MovieGen FP8 model, and this one is pretty consumer PC friendly for FP8 MovieGen. In this way, we don't need the LoRa model for whatever you're trying to do. Here, we don't need the CauseVid model. So bypass this one. Or, if you have your LoRa model for specific styles, of course, you can use that. But here, I just want to do a demo on how to run this, purely to see how this fine-tuned model performs. So here, I'm going to use the same text prompts first, and then we'll try out some more sci-fi movie scene styles that go with this AI model and see how that looks. So here, we're going to set the sampling step again, same, using 30 steps, and then we have to bring the frame number back down to 81 because MovieGen is not an auto-regressive long-form video model. So we go back to the 81 frames by default for 1 to 0.1. And this one is more focused again on the quality of the video. It's going to show more cinematic styles of video scene. So all the video clips I've generated before are pretty much like what you'd see in movies, where you've got scenes like this, people talking, and then I've got another one, walking in the desert, more sci-fi style. The one that I generated in 720p resolution is the lake view here where you see it's very clear. Although this isn't in HD resolution yet, it's still able to create that locally on your PC. And also one more 720p resolution video I just tried with a one second clip of a futuristic gaming room with all the computer gadgets and the guy is talking right in front of the camera. It looks pretty good using MovieGen and creating this video clip. And one more that I've tried is this underwater sci-fi style. Although the coloration is all similar bluish because it's in the theme of water, it looks very smooth and it always shows a cinematic scene angle with this AI model. And as you can see, two people in conversation like this also have pretty nice details. The other sci-fi scene I've tried is this one. This was generated in 720p resolution, as you can see. Obviously, the video player is larger when I drag it into the web browser, and you see that it's so clear. There aren't any broken parts of the ship, spaceship, or planet. It doesn't morph too much. It still works very well in this clip. Okay, this looks much better with Gen 5, where we have very nice colorations on the garden. You see the plants everywhere. They're in different colors, just like what it shows in the previous examples of the magical garden. Now let's try another new text prompt. This is going to be in fast motions, more like an action scene, and see how this works if this AI model is able to handle it. Now one more thing worth mentioning is that this AI model is going to be downloaded from the Hugging Face repo. 
Again, I'll link all of this in the video description below. You have the FP16 model weight and also the FP8 as well. Currently I am using the FP8 for the demo for MovieGen. This is using WAN 2.1. Again, it's the 14B parameter size model to run this fine tune. This time I'm going to do 1280 width and 720 height. So this means it's going to be a 720p resolution generating this video. And I'm going to try this with random seed numbers just to make it more interesting for different variants and see how that looks. And one more thing that I have in this workflow, I didn't include the tcatch, so that means it's going to take a long while to generate this video. So we've got the 720p resolution and we're using these fast motion styles of video generation with the Quinn generated text prompt. So I've got a few more here I want to test. And this time I'm using this one with the motorcycle race, a fast tracking shot of this video scene. Well, it's able to handle fast action scenes like this, where we've also got this kind of quality in other commercial AI video generators as well. So I think this fine-tuned model improvement does a lot to help with one 2.1 video if you want to use it specifically for AI video like this. Or I've generated a few more using VGen with something like this, more futuristic styles of a drone flying over to the character, and also more futuristic styles like this. Although the hologram on the other side of the character is kind of morphing, well, that's what holograms look like, so yeah, acceptable for this video scene. And then the other one is the default fox running over the snow mountains in comfy org examples for WAN 2.1. I regenerated that using the movie gen demo, the movie gen model, for the demo video. So check this out. Whether you use Cosvid or movie gen, they are both based on WAN 2.1. One is focusing on speed and long length video, capable of creating them, and the other one, Gen V, as you can see, is able to create cinematic scenes in Comfy UI. And as well, you can use a local PC however you want to use it. And so that's it for this video. It looks quite amazing. We're starting to see some new fine-tuned models based on the base models of WAN 2.1. Of course, you can try this and see that, you know, the thing is, right now, we're having more and more fine-tuned models for different AI purposes, just like what we saw before in Stable Diffusion where we had different styles of images and different styles of fine-tuned checkpoint models created. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.